So once again, we see the First Circuit Court of Appeals uh, disrespect litigants coming out of New Hampshire because they don't want to hear the case. So they shut it all down, no oral argument, no nothing. All right, no analysis, even in my case, of this First Amendment appeal against Senator Kelly Ayotte. I'm not surprised because the court did the same thing with Leek O'Kenny's appeal earlier. And uh, at least in that case, he had high-powered lawyers, so they did issue an analysis. In my case, there's no analysis. It's just basically, get the hell out of here and take your ass to SCOTUS. Fine. Well, welcome to KingCast.net. And you may recall last week that I caught the U.S. courts uh, snooping around on my website I thought they were there to do the right thing, study up and make a principal decision. Uh, negative. Uh, they were there to shut me down, as usual, in this First Amendment appeal, a free press appeal against Senator Kelly Ayotte. And by the way, they dropped this bomb on a Friday evening right before the close of business. So, you know, keep everything down, keep it quiet, uh, business as usual there. But anyway, as noted in my previous journal entries, um, they watched the movies, they came, and they ran. You know, they were reading about Judge McCafferty, who never should have been on the case, as I'll uh, show you in a movie later. Uh, they read about that, and basically what they did was they issued a rubber stamp. They didn't address anything substantively. I'll show you their uh, one-and-a-half-page opinion in a minute. Uh, they didn't address whether or not having the National Police Department present on public time helps meet the threshold for whether or not the event is public. You know, I cited uh, NAACP versus Thompson as a prior case that's very much on point that they ignored. Uh, and it's interesting to see how vague the court was when it wrote that it only considered portions of the corrected reply brief that were relevant. Well, query, which portions were relevant, your honors? That will be a question for my motion for clarification filed on Monday. Uh, I'll never forget the thrill and the excitement of, of uh, winning First Amendment trials, jury trials. Uh, I'll never forget the excitement of getting into law school and graduating from a top 50 law school. I worked for the government as an attorney. I was bright-eyed and bushy-tailed, and I thought that the government and courts were there to help the people. They're not there for that reason, uh, typically. They're there to help the rich, the powerful, the wealthy, and the government. So uh, that's what's going on in this instance, and I see it loud and clear. I've even had reporters from so-called uh, progressive uh, journalists you know, uh, call me from the Sunlight Foundation and then bail on the case, but yet they ask me for money. What do I have to do with you? You had nothing to do with me. I don't know if that was a beatdown you got from your editors or if Kelly paid you off. I don't know, but whatever it is, I got the record journalized. So now the Republicans and the Democrats can have publicly advertised campaign events and freely reject journalists that they don't like, even if these events are held on commercial property, as long as the incumbent is not the one running. Uh, so I, I, that's dangerous, but that's the state of the First Amendment. And we'll see where that lands in SCOTUS. Uh, see you there. KingCast.net. Enjoy the weekend. So the U.S. courts are busy on my website today, Chris King's First Amendment page. Why are they there? They're there because they're reading about Landry B. McCafferty, the magistrate who should have recused herself from my First Amendment free press case against Kelly Ayotte, uh, the New Hampshire GOP and Nashville Police Department, as I mentioned on my blog. Well, um, it's quite an issue, and they're all over it. Now, um, there's the hierarchy. I'm at the bottom. Uh, McCafferty worked, as I point out, she worked for Jack Middleton and Jennifer Parent, they were both, you know, senior partners. One was a founding partner at McLean uh, Graff, where Kelly Ayotte, the defendant, worked uh, in the same time period as her honor. But nobody told me this, okay? I figured it out later, because I'm not stupid. I might be slow on the uptake, and I missed it at first, but I figured it out. And that tainted the whole case. And that case is going to SCOTUS. Uh, my appeal is filed. You know, they basically lock me out of their uh, publicly advertised events that are held at commercial venues, uh, using Nashville Police Department to cover it. And these police are being paid for, I guarantee you, uh, on the public dollar. So I've got case law on my side and common sense, but they want to control the media. And anyway, you can follow all this on my journal page. The briefs are all there. Uh, everything is there to follow. And I'm waiting for my uh, appellate argument to be scheduled uh, for, for, for uh, oral argument in the Court of Appeals, uh, First Circuit Court of Appeals, KingCast versus Kelly Ayotte at all, uh, 12... 1891 is the appellate number. Follow along. The U.S. courts are...